What's wrong with Linux? I've been having a good look at Linux lately, particularly at Ubuntu. Very impressed, very, very impressed. But what, why is it not taking off? It seems to be very good on the server side. I mean, we've seen that for years and years. Enough web servers out there running it. Probably more web servers out there running it. The desktop, they really haven't made an impact there, have they? There have been all kinds of issues around trying to get hardware vendors to uh, sell you a desktop with Linux pre-configured. Pre um, Dell did it for a while. I don't know if they're doing it anymore, but they certainly stopped doing it for a while. Um, there are a number of others that do it. There are small niche players that do it, of course. But you know, if you really want to make a difference, you, can, you, you need to get the really big shops to have a... Uh, to let people choose between not only Windows on a pre-installed on a desktop but also Linux pre-installed on a desktop. So I said I've been experimenting with Ubuntu for uh, ooh, a couple of months now. I'm very, very impressed. It looks very good. It's pretty slick. Uh, there are driver issues. Yeah, sure. I mean, then again, I'm using Windows Vista as well. And I haven't got my Bluetooth stuff to work yet. Um, my printer doesn't have drivers. I'm recording this with a Logitech webcam now instead of a Philips webcam because it uh, just didn't work in Vista. Uh, so, okay, there are driver issues, and I think uh, Vista will probably get them sorted out more quickly than uh, the Linux distributions will. But maybe that's just a matter of time. You know what the biggest problem is, I think? It's the Linux community. Ah, well, how can it possibly be the Linux community? Well, the Linux community is probably the best thing there is out there, to be honest, because it creates code, it makes how-tos, frequently asked questions, helps people. You can get on there and it certainly helped my problem. I mean, I, I don't think I ever had to wait much more than an hour before my question was answered. Brilliant. So what is it that I'm talking about? Well, I'm not really talking about the whole Linux community. I'm just talking about the few people who believe it's an a open source or nothing world. I mean, that's just not the way it works. You know, there's uh, air's free, but clean air certainly isn't free. Um, sun is free, right, but having good sun, certain, well, living in uh, Northern Europe, having good sun is certainly not free. You need to go somewhere to get it. So nothing's free in the world. Nothing has to be free, and certainly if it's going to be the best thing, it doesn't particularly need to be free. So why make a holy war of it? Why, why, why do people have an argument, Linux or Microsoft, open source or Microsoft? That's not what it's about, it's not. It's about functionality, and of course it's functionality at a cost, and then it kind of seems to make really good sense to pay nothing, because that's quite a low cost. But don't just pay nothing um, and suffer because of it. Now, let me give you a good, good example. Um, I've been having a good look around to see uh, which email uh, server provides me with all the functionality that I want in an easy enough way. Uh, now most companies have Microsoft Exchange installed, so um, I then thought, okay, let me have a look at which web client I can use to hook into Exchange. Now sure, it's a proprietary thing and there's an issue with why people can't, uh, can't access all of the um, a functionality that you can in Outlook when you're launching something like Thunderbird or Evolution or whichever email client you might be using. But at the end of the day, email is pretty important for what I do every day. So email has got to get sorted out. So there are those kind of things where at the one end I'd say, okay, well, let's go for a Linux desktop. Let's go for Firefox as a web browser. Uh, but hey, you know, I want my Outlook as, uh, as my email client. Well, what's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with it. And let's be realistic. No company anywhere is going to cut over from 100% Windows to 100% open source. Well, I don't even think it's possible. But uh, no one's going to cut over from 100% Windows to 100% open source or however close they can get immediately. Of course they're not. They're going to do things slowly. So let's think about it this way. Why not, why not just move bit by bit? Why not move application by application? Why not get rid of the highest cost application that you have, uh, or the ones in which you can get functionality par s similar uh, uh, products? So take Office, right? 
I'm not talking about Office 2007 with all the nice graphical things in it, I suppose, because you know, spell checking, things like that. It's been in many products for a long time. Uh, but take Office, right? Why don't you just replace Office first? Oh, okay, we can live with that because we can convert documents or maybe we don't need to. And we can, yeah, we can live with that. And then later on, we just convert something else. Let's see, uh, what will we convert next? Well, convert things like Access and uh, MS Project. Yeah, you can do that as well. Yeah, fine. Um, web Store things. Parts of your SharePoint portal service. Yeah, sure. Uh, email. Well, let's wait, I'll wait with that. Let's wait with email for a little while. So, so we'll do bit by bit by bit. Now, ideally, I'd like to do email last because email is one of the most important things from my perspective that I use every day. So, hey, uh, as an end user, I'd say uh, chill and uh, come back later. I'd rather you replace other things before that. So, for example, if you can upgrade my desktop in any case, well, why don't you just put Linux on it? Oh, can live with that. You put Linux on my desktop, but you leave me with my email client. Guys, Linux community out there, are you listening? I want my Outlook running on Linux. Okay. Great. I suppose I can get wine and I can run it in uh, there. Yeah, okay. Well, we can do that. But that's the way we think, right? It's not a holy war. It's not open source or Microsoft or nothing else. It's the best of all worlds. So let's make a real case of it now. Let's have a really good look and say, okay, well, which bits can we move? And which bits can we move when? So sort that out and I've moved.